My guest today is Luen Mong. Luen, how you doing? Hey, how's it going, David? It's good to have you back on the show. Thank you, thank you. And uh, what, are, what are, you brought some toys with you today. Let's let's talk about it. not this one. This is my toy. That's just <laughs> yes, how much how long have we, I know how long we've been recording. Yeah. Well, I brought some toys today. I uh, let's talk about IoT again, right? Yeah, um, yeah. And this is the T of yes. IoT because IoT is well, Internet of Things, of right? Things. These in are the this, things. In this case, these are things or devices. Yep. I mean, the concept has been there for a long, long time, right? It's been there since the well, let's, 70s Let's review the, con- the concept, because yeah. I know we've talked about this before. So, well, in general, things is a, is a, is a newer, hip thing. However, <laughs> the uh, the concept is that there is a device that connects to the internet, okay. and then you send the data up to the, to the you know, so-called the internet, right? In, right. This, in this case, cloud. Yep. Uh, so, the, in this uh, newer age, internet of things means that the device that sends data to the cloud. Okay. And... Well, you consume the data, you figure out what you do with it, and then uh, you know, do machine learning, whatever, et cetera, push it back down as needed, or figure it out, right? Okay. At and the end the, of the and day. And the devices, in, in contrast to the, when I've been connecting to the cloud for years, it's not my laptop or my desktop. Correct. It's something like like this little thing. All little things, you know, right? It could whatever. Be, could be it could be this uh, tiniest of computers. Yes. It could be a little tiny micro, uh, you know, micro, uh, microcontroller, all the way down to a... You know, machines that are regular computer size things, right? right? So it goes at various different sizes and mm-hmm. shapes and pricing and, you know, specs that comes along with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they all have various pros and cons. So, um, yeah, the, I mean, the concept is, you know, it's been out there for a while. It's just that data and the prices have dropped a lot more mm. and things are getting cheaper. And things are, well, cheaper doesn't necessarily mean that it's you know, easier either, right? Things also need to be, you got to be concerned about things like security and, you sure. know, uh, performance and so on and so forth as well. But it is getting, uh, you know, uh, cheaper to build and get it, you know, easier to get into their platforms hmm. of, of choice nowadays. Okay. So yeah. tell me, why'd you bring all these devices here? Yeah, I want to actually talk about, you know, like the smallest of all devices, right? This would be something, what we call an ESP8266 uh, okay. type device. It turn, got a, turn towards the camera. It'd be hard it has to see, a, of course. Uh, but, uh, yep, I can send you guys a little pictures after that, right? Yeah. It has a uh, Wi-Fi uh, module in it and a, a small micro con- a microcontroller. Okay. Uh, it actually has a, a way for us to get a uh, get this device onto uh, items such as Microsoft IoT Core using MQTT uh, protocol. So you can actually authenticate against you know this chip, and this guy can go online and actually send data all the way up to the cloud uh, securely. And what is IoT Core? Uh, I would uh, sorry uh, IoT Hub. Uh, Windows. Well, we'll talk about IoT Core and IoT Hub. Yeah. IoT Hub is a um, is a is a service that Microsoft provides uh, that allows for data actually uh, to aggregate into one singular spot uh, through uh, into Microsoft Cloud. Okay. So all devices, right, will actually need to enter data through one one point or the other. Okay. Back in the day, we would use maybe uh, web services. Now we can use a more uh, industrial uh, uh, proven uh, technologies, right? So we can have like a million, two million, three million of these devices connected to one endpoint called the IoT Hub, hmm. and you can actually send data through. Okay. Uh, and then you mentioned that you could put IoT Core on this. I can use the IoT Core type technology on it. So oh. what happens in this case is this machine will get a, uh, a flash uh, uh, with a authentication protocols that allows it to actually get on a Wi-Fi and B then take the data you know bits and uh, serial uh, bits right from here and push it out to the cloud to the IoT hub and for you to consume you know figure out what to do with it. So this is actually a very very small device and as such right price is cheap. Mm-hmm. Security, well, there is an internal built on security, but that's about it. Uh, this is about, if you get it in bulk, you can get it for about a buck or so. Oh, wow. So it's fairly cheap. I mean, mm. this is stuff that... Can you write code and deploy it to that? Oh, yeah. You can get about four megs of code. Uh, mm. So it's actually pretty decent mm. for a microcontroller unit, right? Uh, this little guy, you can actually... Most of the people actually use it for things like switches, like, you know, like lights and, uh, you know, so on and so forth. Okay, so there are outputs and inputs on here. Yes. Where you could, uh, the outputs could, for example, turn the light on and off. Correct, in, correct. In response to, I don't know, something in the cloud, for example. Yeah, you can push the data back down okay. and, and, and switch it, switch things on and off if needed. Right? The next thing up is, you know, more like ESP, you know, the bigger version of that. It got more in, uh, IO, IOs on it. Okay. The chip itself is the same exact chip. However, uh, what happens in this case is that um, you get a lot more ports, right? Here, you only have four or so in the back plus uh, power, here right. you can actually have 32, so and those on and are so the forth. inputs and outputs we were talking about. Yes. So yes. now you can control many devices or receive input from many devices. M- exactly. Or I shouldn't say many, but more. More devices. I, yeah, more will be the, the, the right keyword here, right? Mm-hmm. And then, you know, 
further on down the line, you actually get to things like uh, this device right here. This is what we call the Microsoft's uh, Azure certified, um, you know, uh, the Azure Sphere device, hmm. right? This particular device actually has a, um, a microcontroller as well. Okay. Uh, it actually has a, uh, a lot more, you know, processing power than this, you know, the, the other ESP device. Typically, th if you want to get it as is right now, it's about 80 bucks. However, if you are a big manufacturer, right, things like, uh, you know, Samsung's and LG's of the world, you can actually uh, uh, get this chip directly because at that point, right, you're not actually making a prototype. Mm -hmm. You're making a actual built into a fridges and, uh, you know, uh, uh, clocks or whatever you have, you have. Hmm. Uh, at that point, the price of these things go down to about ten bucks a piece. Oh, if you build them in bulk. Yeah, if you're looking at uh, you know bulk pricing. The good news with this is that this particular uh, MCU in there, which is the microcontroller okay, yeah. microcontroller unit, uh, this actually runs on a Linux kernel that is actually built by Microsoft and wow. updated by Microsoft. Whoa. It is right. Microsoft it's, it's, Linux. Yeah, it, it's, it's, <laughs> it, it is. It is. It is to a point where things get blurry and interesting, right? <laughs> Uh, so this runs on Linux kernel. It runs on a Microsoft own update path. So you don't even have to update this machine uh, device. It will actually do all the updating for you through Azure. Hmm. It authenticates through a Azure AD protocol. So actually, you know, you do need to actually have an Azure AD account for the device. Uh, and it, once you actually have it, you can actually authenticate. You can push updates, codes to it, etc., and you can control it. Data go up and down. And the best part is this, right? It actually can do some basic Kubernetes and um, and and edge processing on here. Okay, you mentioned Kubernetes, so you could you could deploy a container container on there to that Linux device. Yes, and have code running inside that container. Yes, in fact, and you probably have multiple containers. You can, well, I mean, not much space compared to other devices, okay. but it's good enough okay. where you can actually uh, run basic edge computing on here. Okay, and edge computing refers to what? Edge computing is a uh, technology where you actually uh, allow for, uh, be, you know, like uh, decisions to be made on the uh, on the device, right? Okay. So think about it this way. A lot of the times when, you, when a device like a little guy like this mm -hmm. send data up to the cloud, yep. It knows what you know what the state is. It, decisions are made on the cloud and pushed back down uh, to to a device. Okay. Typically requires a connect, constant connection. Mm. Well, we don't live in a constantly connected world, right? Mm. We do live in other places where, you know, things like uh, farms and you know, uh, you know, e even in the middle of the street, right? You sure. you, you may not have connection. Yeah, especially if you're uh, in a moving vehicle. Yes. So in those cases, this type of device comes in handy because you can actually do processing with some intelligence on here. Ah, uh, okay. So you can actually do you know uh, pre-processing intelligent you know intelligent processing on here, and then send the right you know curated data that actually makes sense back to the cloud to get additional processing, etc. You know, hmm. or, or, or telemetry or okay. more information at that point. Hmm. So this is uh, so this allows some, that gives you some flexibility as to where you want your processing to happen. Yeah, and you know more intelligence coming up coming down right. Okay. And and better better processing uh, that that happens. Mm -hmm. Well, moving on to a little more more more, or more powerful devices. Now you're looking at things like Raspberry Pi. That's the screen thing. Yeah. Yes, that's green thing. Raspberry Pi has gone through a couple of different iterations. Mm -hmm. This is a wonderful, wonderful device for prototyping. I will never recommend this for running a full-blown uh, system out of it. Mm -hmm. However, uh, uh, due to a couple of different things, right? One of them is that it actually runs on a uh, micro SD card. Micro SD cards actually die, oh. and they will die over time. But amazing device for prototyping. You can actually do a lot of. Uh, uh, you know, code and, and, and run a bunch of uh, things on here, right? Okay, so you wouldn't take that and put it out in the field in a farm somewhere No, I, it, and leave it for 10 years? Like no. On the other hand, time. there is a different version of this mm -hmm. out there that exists. Uh, what it does is it actually got rid of the uh, get rid of the micro SD card and actually have a, uh, a hat that goes on top that That's actually more solid, so more solid state. Okay. Uh, uh, you know, uh, and more durable items. as a result. Correct. So that will be something along the lines of if you want to go this route, right? Oh, okay. These are about 35 bucks a piece. Mm -hmm. They're wonderful for what they need to do. And the best thing is these things run Windows IoT Core. Slightly different from a Windows that runs, uh, not Windows, like Linux that runs on here. Okay. Uh, so that's the second time you mentioned IoT Core. This is yes. uh, uh, some sort of framework? IoT Core is actually, think of IoT Core as a uh, full-blown Windows 10 um, server type uh, environment. It is actually a full blown Windows. So it's an it's stripped system. down. Yes. Okay. It is stripped down, insecured to a point where it is actually highly, virtually in impenetrable if you do it right. Okay. So there are the keyword there is if you do it right, right. Okay, there are yeah, a few I things see. that comes along with uh, 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 with nuances in terms of how to set it up to make sure that device is secure. 
This is obviously you know a little less secure because there was no TPM module built in, so I'm on sorry, and so is forth. That what, yeah? TPM. This is a um, uh, a security module so that you can actually allow for uh, you know additional encryption, etc. When you oh, boot okay. up the device. I thought it was the the the, the form that you fax and you have to have the special <laughs> form on top of. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, not quite. Yeah, so in this case, this is TPS, actually okay. yes TPS report, <laughs> right? Yeah, in this case, this is a uh, actual module that goes into the uh, security uh, for security layers. So that uh, the device can authentic authenticate it and boot up, you know, et cetera, right? So all of these are, in this particular device, you are doing it virtually. And, and as such, it gets a little more trickier. You know, anybody can, fake, you know, a lot of people can take the SD card out and fake it, right? Hmm. Okay. Such security-wise, not so, not so good. Oh. Now moving on up, do they actually little more devices like that one right there, that which is you. the Snapdragon uh, 410C. Mm -hmm. And device like this guy right here, this is the same exact form factor as that particular uh, Raspberry Pi, but this little guy run runs a um, uh, ARM Cortex uh, chipset. It's the same exact chip that is running on a lot of the cell phones out there. It actually has a built both uh, built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth antennas in here, hmm. as well as uh, as well as uh, quad-core GPU uh, CPU and, and a dual-core CPU, I believe, if I, if I if I recall correctly. Okay. And the best part is this little guy can run things like billboards outside in a highly, you know, uh, crappy conditions, right? Like weather-wise and so on and so forth. No, and okay. you've got solid-state drive, everything's set to go about eighty bucks, and you you have a you have a device that is you know pretty much ready mm. to go for a or full-blown hardcore deployment. Mm. Do you want more power? Now you look at this guy, right? This is a Intel Atom quad-core processor that is actually built on the same form factor as the Raspberry Pi. Wow, and it's got a little heat sink on top of it, which tells me that it probably runs hot. It does run a little warm, right? It, it, is, it, is, a, uh, it is a uh, hot processor. It is not for every, you know, a, a, a everybody, right? On the, on the other hand, if you want a lot of processing done, hmm. if you want a lot more edge computing done, et cetera, you can do that a lot easier on this type of device. Hmm. Because all of these guys, right, Raspberry Pi, the uh, Qualcomm uh, uh, 410C Snapdragon and a board, for example, they all can they all run Windows 10 IoT Core, which means that you can actually run x86 uh, executables. That it, uh, you know you can run UWP apps, you can run regular C# -sharp apps, you can run regular uh, .NET Core apps, you can run pretty much virtually anything at, at this. I point. like the sound of that. Yeah, I could use my existing skills and yes. deploy them to these little tiny devices. Yes. And not only can you deploy it, but you can actually make them run consistently. You can check on them. You can mm -hmm. actually update them, et cetera, through the built-in Microsoft frameworks. Hmm. Yeah. So these are. This is from from in terms of security-wise, right? Uh, and, and in terms of you know portability and and, and development-wise, least secure, cheapest to get into market, okay. cheapest to get get you know get published, uh, you know, et cetera, all the way up to a heck of a lot more secure. This is actually secure out of the box. Okay, that's uh, that was the most expensive one, is that right? This is about 80 bucks right now. Okay. This All is right. the most expensive. But it looks like I, I see a trend here that the small, the larger ones tend to be more expensive than the smaller ones. Is that a general rule of thumb or is that just a coincidence? Uh, it's a coincidence-ish, right, in this case, uh, because if you look at things like, uh, you know, uh, uh, back in the day, right, this is, this is what I used to get into uh, IoT with or device things with. Okay. This is a uh, Arduino. Hmm. Arduinos can be, you know, you can head them for about, uh, you know, uh, five, ten bucks. Oh, yeah. I see. Okay. As a matter of fact, you can actually get the chip from the Arduino. I built it from scratch before. You can get it for about a buck a piece, right? I see. So it is, the sizing does play, a, you know, a, a bit of a difference. Obviously, the bigger the size, the bigger the chip, bigger the die, you know, uh, really smaller the, really the die. Really the size of the process is yeah. what we're talking about. The exactly. The processor is not the entire thing. Correct. In fact, I can usually, on most of these, I can pick out the little black square. Yeah, that exactly. That is the processor. So in this On case, this you have it right here, here, you have it there, and in this case, it's right behind this uh, sheet shield, okay. but it will be about the same size, okay. and right here is about a postage stamp size, right? This is a mm. uh, uh, you know, quad-core atom. And the best part is, I actually have devices that are deployed right now through my walk uh, that are running on a you know uh, Pentium uh, you know uh, great uh, classes, which is a little bit bigger boxes, mm -hmm. yeah. all fully self-contained uh, with uh, magnetic radiation, you know, uh, shield, et cetera, et cetera, on uh, places like um, you know hospitals and um, uh, steel uh, steel mills. What's the coolest IoT app you've ever built? It's a gateway that actually allows for us to transmit data at about uh, at sixty hertz coming from a steel mill out in the middle of nowhere in Europe. And there are about you know, 30, 20 and 30 of these things out there that are sending data constantly. What kind of data? Uh, data re regards to actual quality of steel. 
So mm -hmm. in, a, in a molten pot of steel. So measuring the product that has come off the, the line. As actually being, being actually is, uh, created. Oh, even before it comes off the line. Yeah. To see it, the quality of it. And then you know instantly if you've got a bad batch coming through. Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, at that point, right, in the case of steel, uh, you know, the quality still makes a big difference, right? Uh, the most uh, highest so. cost, the highest cost being, uh, you know, industrial steel. Okay. Uh, so rebar being the cheapest, right? If you have a crappy steel, you might also start making rebars. Oh. Uh, all the way down to, you know, the, the industrial steel is the, the steel that actually built this kind of building. I guess I never really thought about that. Yeah. But I guess if it's holding up an entire building, that makes more sense than if it's holding up a sidewalk. Right? Yeah, so it, it should be stronger. Surprising, right? Like, because I keep <laughs> yeah, thinking that, that you totally know, like, surgical steel will be more expensive, but no, not quite. Right. <laughs> yeah, that was, that, that was a fun fact. All right. <laughs> All right. Oh, very cool. Um, uh, people, this is a lot of stuff here. Oh, yeah. um, and uh, a lot of people are just getting started with IoT. Where should they go? Well, if you're looking at starting with IoT, right, the first thing that I would actually go look at is the uh, Microsoft uh, IoT Core uh, uh, Developer Guides. There are a bunch of uh, documentation on okay. how to get started on any of these devices. Mm -hmm. uh, some on, you know, uh, IoT uh, Azure Sphere, some on, you know, uh, IoT Core. It, you know, the, the documentation is so deep, it's, it's unbelievable. Okay. And, and some of those documents, I actually help write. So, oh, yeah. yeah, it should be fun. Lewin, thanks so much. Thank you. Hello, friends. Welcome to this you know, new technology in this uh, amazing fast-paced. Uh, hopefully, you can learn something from IoT and a lot of other things from people like you know, myself or you know, friends that David has. Many more to come in the future. Thank you.